This conference will now be recorded. Um, good morning. Uh, I'm going to start out with a, uh, a, a quick little song today. Uh, and then for me, it might get a, a little bit funny. Um, so uh, just bear with me. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. <laughs> I'm going to skip to another section of the song. And, and since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace, I'll cast on him. My every care and wait for the sweet hour of prayer. Um, this morning, Glory Moment um, is being brought forth by the call for prayer. Uh, and um, as you as you uh, think about the lesson today. Um, part of it made me laugh, so excuse me if I do break out laughing, but when you know what you know, then you know, and, um, and, and a whole lot of it is extremely serious, uh, because we're dealing with one of those good old prophets, Ezekiel. Um, so with that being said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read and then take you on a little journey with me. Thank you, Apostle, for putting that um, that lesson up because I, I did not memorize everything on the lesson. Um, I appreciate it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally read the scripture. Well, no, I'll, I'll, yes, I'm gonna read this scripture, read this whole thing, and then get to talking. Uh, so for those of you that are coming, welcome, good morning. Um, you will see why this is eventually going to be an hour of prayer um, and why I chose this um, that song to sing. If you missed the song, just go on YouTube and find Sweet Hour of Prayer when you're finished and go back afterwards and listen to it and bring yourself into the moment of prayer. I may not be um, an hour today because uh, I, I have to get somewhere, but um, I would like to have discussion. All right. So today is September 9th, if you did not know. And um, the scripture text is from Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 22. The Lord said, get up and go into the valley, and I will speak to you there. This is September 9th, and from the heart of God. Everything in this is in quotes. I want you to re I want you to re recognize this. Everything in this scripture in this lesson today is in quotes. And I found that to be interesting in and of itself because most of the lessons that we get may be from a perspective, but this one I'm seeing is from the heart of God. Listen, and I quote, if you want to encounter me, go where I tell you. That's the first sentence. Sometimes I whisper to you in the moment, right where you are. Sometimes I meet you in your normal routine, but sometimes you need a change of location. And I don't know how many times on this line you have heard the word shift but I've heard it at least a good six or seven times solid where people have shifted from one thing to the next. I'll get more into that in a moment. That last sentence that I read, but sometimes you need to need a change of location. My son, would you go to the mountain? Would you go to a mountaintop or withdraw from the crowds? Again, that first song that I sang, today was sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. Um, sometimes prayer can do it. Prayer can call us away into that place. 
but I will continue reading. Ezekiel had to go to a place where I could, let's move to the next section. Oops. Oh, I guess it's, it's not converting. Let me go ahead and I, I'm glad I opened it and have it on my other phone. All right. Ezekiel had to go to a place where I could show him my glory more fully and privately, then send him back into his normal surroundings. Jeremiah went down to the potter's house so I could so I could give him an illustration. I put my friends in places that would be relevant to the word I am about to speak or put them in a strategic spot in order to speak a specific word to them. I have many reasons and I rarely explain them fully, but when you hear me telling you go somewhere, get up and go. I'm sorry, I'm already chuckling uh, because I'm, I'm, th I'm, I'm reminiscent of, I, I, well, I'm a musician um, first and I'm reminiscent of people that, that sing these songs that where he may lead me, I will go for I've learned to trust him. So Jesus will lead me all the way. Jesus shall lead me night and day. I, I flip those, but he is the truest friend to me. When I remember Calvary and I listen to people sing, and they going until they figure out what they got to do. And I'm sorry, I'm not, <laughs> don't mean to laugh because it is very serious. Um, sometimes we are eager and, and also um, willing to a fault. And it takes you to understand who is calling you, understand who that person is, who that person is that's calling you and telling you to go. I will continue reading. When I speak, sometimes the location matters. I am not bound by geography. These, do you understand this whole entire segment is in quotes? This is not the perspective of the author. This is, this is, this is like a direct. In quotes, I am not bound by geography, but I, am often, I often use it to make a point. The topography of the promised land is full of subtle messages about my purposes. The paths I led my people on are rich with symbolism. My physical creation and my spiritual growth go hand in hand. If you understand this, you will begin to learn lessons and hear messages in the ways and the, in the, ways and the places I lead you. I have already filled your life with deep symbolism. Mm-hmm. And you'll begin to notice it. And when you find solitude and privacy, I will unveil myself more noticeably. Your location can affect what you hear. And so audience, where are you? If your location can affect what you hear, then where are you now? And I can almost tell you that your answer is going to determine is going to be dependent on what you're hearing. Whatever you tell, however you describe in your ears, your location, Adam, is going to dictate what you hear. See, Adam wasn't, e and I could go there, Adam when he heard the voice of the Lord, Lord walking in the garden, he was not immersed in the environments in the presence of the Lord. Adam ain't supposed to be hearing the voice of the Lord. He's supposed to be right where the presence of the Lord is. He's hiding. Where are you, Adam? I'm going to go a little further. Don't resist the impulses I give you to position yourself to hear. Adam on the line. I will make them clear to you, but you must follow them. You, mu you will encounter me in places you never expected. Um, again, and I chuckle a lot at this particular scripture because I myself am on a journey. Um, I, won't, I won't allude to talk about it because it's, really, it's not really about me. Um, it's about where, where he's positioning me and what he, and, and not only me, but everybody on this line. Everybody on the slide. So 
there's a couple of things that I'm going to talk about really briefly. Um, and I'm just really speaking from um, what I got. Dreams. Dreams is a door point. That's the first thing that I want to say. Uh, Apostle, if you if you bring this back to the beginning page where it has the scripture, Ezekiel 3 verse 22, I would appreciate it. That's a good place to for people to focus. That have their eyes open. <laughs> dreams. Dreams is a good door point. It's a good place where um, the Lord um, makes a decision to reveal things to people. Look in, in the book of Job. Um, in Job, um, the Lord reveals things to Job in the night in the night vision, um, even through the air gate. Um, where he provides instruction. So when you get a chance, look in the book of Job, it might be 33, 25, 33. Um, not exactly sure, don't quote me, but look up Job and in the nighttime and instruction and when, when he provides instruction. So why am I mentioning dreams as a door point? Because those of us that are really followers of God, um, he will use dreams he will use dreams to 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 show you things. And if you don't have this book yesterday, they were talking about books. There's a book by Dr. Joe Iboji, I-B-O-J-I-E. Well, there's several books by Dr. Joe Iboji. Um, it's the, it's the Bible-based dictionary of prophetic symbols. And the word symbols is in this um, lesson because in the quote that I read from this lesson, it says that God has already given, he's given us symbols. He gives us symbols, right? We may not understand these symbols. And so I, I present this book, the Bible-based dictionary of prophetic symbols, um, because it bridges the gap between revelation and application. Dr. Joey Boji also has another book on dreams. And so it's a matter of looking at those symbols looking at your dreams and seeing what God is trying to say to you because it is through dreams that it is the door point for many people um, where God is going to expose you um, to what it is that he's doing. Um, I, I want to also mention that through the, through the dreams, you get exposure. Now, I remember as a kid, um, my dad would use Christmas time as an opportunity to expose us to these new neighborhoods, neighborhoods with these houses that were just amazing. Um, and, the, you know, we, we would see the houses in the dark, but it has lights all around it. We would see the houses in the dark in the nighttime, but there's light all around these houses because it's Christmas time. And so at nighttime, you're seeing this house, you're seeing the layout of the house. You know, most houses, when they do the decorations, they um, outline, outline the house. You see the, the infrastructure of the layout of the house because they, they take their time and they line the roof and then they line the, the, the fence and they line the bushes um, and some of these houses, when you see them lit up at night, it's an elaborate situation. It's elaborate. Um, the, other, the other thing about exposure that is um, very obvious, those of you that are into pictures, and those of you that are older than, I don't know, somebody born in the 1980s, <laughs> may remember that you used to take a picture and then there was a film. And you would take that film and you would get that film exposed. And the pr exposure process has the film going to a dark room. And in that dark room, the processor of the film identifies the structure of what it was that you took and presents more light to it as they apply certain liquids to you. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about because you were born way after 1980. And you're like, what? Yes, go look it up on YouTube old time film exposure and see what it used to take to make an image come to light. And what I'm saying to you is that through dreams and through visions, God exposes people to things. 
Um, get that book by Dr. Joey Joe Iboji. Um, if the if the Lord my God is taking time to expose you to his plan in a dream or give you symbols in a vision, then you owe it to yourself. I'm gonna say to, I'm gonna say to me, because I got five fingers and one of them points back to me. I owe it to myself to take the time and write down what it is that I'm getting. I also owe it to myself to, tr to track the seasons with which I'm getting the dreams. And I'm also gonna say this too, because there are, there, there are dream robbers um, that the enemy, some of you might say, I don't dream. Um, this, uh, if you don't dream, I, I need for you to take some time and really pray about this because that is one of the places that our God chooses to communicate to us. And if you if you are not dreaming, or if you awake, or if as soon as you wake up, whatever you dream is gone, I need for you to pray. I need for you to consider a fast because um, in, you not you you may not be aware of the possibility. I'm not saying this is happening, um, but but sometimes. You, you need to consider why is it that when you have a dream, you're not remembering it, okay? That's the Lord's opportunity to speak to you in the, in the nights, in the night visions, as it says in the book of Job, okay? That's just a side note. I'm gonna continue on with the lesson. So exposure, the Lord is at forever trying to expose himself to us. Um, in this lesson, we see examples from uh, Ezekiel, we see examples from Jeremiah. Um, I was reminded immediately of Moses. Um, the Lord showed, um, the Lord God Jehovah showed Moses his backside. Um, and uh, that's what he was able to see. But the, the point is, is that there are these, mo there are these experiences, there are these moments where God is showing up and showing himself to his people. And here's the challenge. Um, these moments are glorious. It's amazing what God reveals to us, reveals to his people during these times. I mean, it's like nothing you've seen before, his glory. You know, Moses goes up to the mountain and he sees the glory of God. Um, the glory of God passes by, he sees a burning bush. Some of these experiences that we see are just so amazing. They are so much bigger than where we are. You need to take time to write it down and actually you know, see, understand the symbolism of it. But he is exposing and he's constantly exposing himself and exposing his glory to us. We just have to pay attention, right? Uh, but then, this is the sentence that just had me cracking up. And it's right up at the top. And then sent him back to his normal surroundings. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was in the glory. I, I was seeing in the dream, I saw keys in my hand, you know, and the exposure just identified so much stuff. And I'm just, I'm throwing out keys, for example. Oh, I saw, I saw a, I saw a shiny blue car, and it just looks so beautiful. And I know cars in dreams represent ministry, and I was so excited and elated. And then I woke up and went back to my normal surroundings. Ugh, you were caught up in the glory, <laughs> only to be slapped back into reality. And in Ezekiel's case, boy, was his reality a hot mess. And some of your realities may not be that bad. I mean, may not be that good either. So, if if you if you're ha if you're in a moment right now where your reality just really is like a mess, it's just like, uh, you got good company. You got Ezekiel, but maybe your situation's not as bad as Ezekiel because he comes back to his normal environment. And if you take time and really read the scripture, whew, Lord have mercy. If you read all of Ezekiel three, you're gonna discover this man went through. But God, and and God purposely exposed him to his glory, to his purpose, to what he wanted. 
his will. He exposed him to this and then said, now my will, it doesn't look beautiful, Ezekiel. Isn't it wonderful? This is really what I want. This is what I had purposed. But look what you're living amongst. And now I need your help. I need you to set your face as flint. That's what the scripture is. This scripture is about setting your face as flint, put, they're putting, his, putting your forehead up against, up against the foreheads of these people because they're wicked. Um, their thoughts and their deeds are wicked. And I know all you really want to do, if you're listening on this line, I know all you really want to do is just sit in the presence of the Lord. You just want to be right there. Um, but there's a reason why you're in the presence of the Lord. And so he is, he immerses you into the, he, he immerses you into the environment that you were in, or he exposes you into the environment to immerse you into what it is he wants you to do. And um, one of the things down further on the same page that Apostle has up, she, it says, I am not bound by geography, but I often use it to make a point in this scripture. Um, I can point to so many scriptures, but I'm just going to really stay focused because so many thoughts come to my mind. Um, I, I mentioned earlier a negative and how you get a negative developed. You get a, develop, a negative developed in the dark room. Um, there was a seven day period where Ezekiel sat and he sat amongst the people and then he was pulled out of that and he was told to go lock himself up. And during the pandemic, there were many churches that used that scripture about locking yourself up. Um, they, some people tied that scripture to even the time during the first uh, Passover where the death angel came in Israel and there was blood on the doorpost. Um, and the people lock themselves up. Um, and there might be a season that after the Lord exposes his will, his desires to you, that you have a shutdown um, and not speak until until it's time for you to, uh, until it's time for you to speak. Some folks, they get the revelation, they open their mouth too quick and they run out and they really needed to take time to sit down, shut down. And this is one of the reasons why I laugh because I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I've been in a shutdown for a minute personally. Um, I was telling the apostle yesterday about some, some traveling that I've been doing, but prior to that, oh no, I was on a straight lock, lockdown. And so to, to even get out is, is, is hilarious, but it's purposeful. When you do get out, when you do, when you open your mouth, there is something that is you need to say. And this is what Ezekiel's task was. He needed to open his mouth. But even before, when he did come out, he got some specific instructions. And, you know, I went through the scripture in Ezekiel 3, and immediately I says, wait a minute. Um, there, there is this instruction where he's supposed to create, he's supposed to put make a tile. And I'm thinking of like a 12 by 12 tile that you put in the ground, those of you that are into home um, construction or, you know, house renovations, you buy these tiles. And this is me and my literal. I'm not saying this is how it is, but when I read the scripture to, again today, um, I'm thinking of this 12 by 12 tile that he was asked to put out on his front step. And then he is supposed to create, he's supposed to create a mini Jerusalem. And I got the sense that it was a mini Jerusalem because there was a pan that he was supposed to use. Um, um, Holy Spirit, the, the, the revelation that is in that scripture says that there's a pan, take the pan. Um, so I'm, uh, at that one, at that point, the circumference of what he is um, building at that point is not bigger than the size of a pan. So you know, you get these when people are building houses, you get the little small house, the little dolly house, or the small version of it. You know, God is giving him the small version of this house, or this the small version of this territory, and then eventually telling him to rest his head on it. And it's a total. I think it's 390 days. Um, and then there's this moment in there and I, and I'm apologizing in advance for those of you that are eating, I'm going to say something that's not pleasant. So just hold up. But the word dung, D-U-N-G is in the scripture and Ezekiel's like, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, Lord, Lord. And I'm, I, now I'm, this is where I'm getting artsy. So I'm interpreting. He's like, okay, God, look, from the time I was small, I didn't have, I don't even deal with impurities. I don't, what you talking about? 
make dung cakes. What? And then the response is, okay, I'm letting you use cow manure to mimic the human condition <laughs> that I want you to deal with. Now, talk about immersion. You know, people that go up there, they, they go up on stage and they're singing, oh, God, I just want to be in your presence. I want to just be immersed in you. You really want to be immersed? Because immersion looks like you get ready to eat some cow, some cow dung. I mean, come on. You really want, you want that experience. And, and here's, here's the thing that keeps me laughing. Because when you know who God is, whatever he tells you to do is not that bad. If he is telling you to do this, you're all right. If man is coming up with some idea, oh, you got to do, no, 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 you should be concerned. But if he is, is he, if he is the one that is telling you, if it is the God that is not, if, if it's the God that is now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless, to keep you from falling and present you fault, faultless, those, there, there are, those are two moments in an individual's life that there's a whole lot of process where he, from keeping you from falling and presenting you faultless, it does not happen as quickly as you say, as I said it. To keep you from falling is his grace to hold you in a situation. But you got to get into the situation first before he can keep you from falling. And so then when you present yourself as one that has been kept from falling, he can then present you faultless. So consider that, you know, when we hear this in a benediction format, and we take it as one sentence, believe me, if you look at just this scripture, and there's more, Ezekiel 4, Ezekiel 5, and it just keeps going. And this brother's getting ready to go through, and this might be some of you today getting ready to go through. But hear what I'm saying. Even in the mini model that the Lord has instructed Ezekiel to build outside his front porch, um, that mini model is another, is, to me, I'm just finding it as another work of the prophetic. The people that are prophets, prophets are builders. They build scenes, they build structure, they build architecture, they build it with words. And if someone has taken the time to speak to you in the prophetic and tell you what thus saith the Lord, it is then your job to not only to not only see his face and be exposed to the glory, that's part of it. But then there is an immersion. And once you're immersed, there is a building, there is a model, there is a structure that actually happens. And I go back to the story as I close, I go back to the story of my dad when he took us on these visits every Christmas in Kingston, Massachusetts. We would see these, not Kingston, sorry, not King, um, did we go to, yeah, we, we went to Kingston, um, Massachusetts. And there's some other places, um, uh, Brighton, Brighton, that's, that's, the, that's the proper place, Brighton, B-R-I-G-H-T-O-N. Isn't that hilarious? The name of the place is Bright, Brighton, Massachusetts. We would go there in the dark to see structures of houses lit up by light, outlined by light. And if we really paid attention, my dad was exposing us to greater in the darkness because we didn't come from a large house. And then all of a sudden, we ended up about 1976, 77, we ended up getting a house. And guess what we did for Christmas? We outlined the house. We decorated the house. And that was also, and that house was also a, a, a smaller version of what he eventually got when we moved to Georgia, which was much bigger. That house, that whole house could fit inside the house that he got in Georgia about two times. And so my point in mentioning this is to have you understand that God is gonna give you through his prophets and even through dreams, he's gonna give you um, the outline of your life. He will have you be exposed um, like, and, and you'll see things in the negative, things that look left will look right, things that look up will be down, vice versa. You have to take the symbolism because he's given us all symbolism. 
you have to take the symbolism, take the time to study and find out what is he saying and wait for the opportunity to be immersed in the environment. Um, and this, this, and this is where it gets serious because the first, the song that I started out singing, Sweet Hour of Prayer, that calls me from a world of care. Um, that particular, the words of that, the ver, this is the first verse. I mix up the first verse in one of the stanzas, and maybe the third verse. Um, um, he, he, he bids us to seek His face, to believe His word, and to trust His grace. That's what he bids us, he, he calls us to do that. So in the midst of whatever it is that we're going through, you can't, I mean, that's why, and I do laugh because I understand that because I'm believing his word and I'm trusting his grace, I can cast on him my every care, whatever it is, whatever it is you woke up with, um, whatever it is that you um, had to deal with that is still unresolved in life, um, you can cast it on him because you know who he is. You understand that um, even in the midst of what it is that you're going through, you know, battles, the God of angel armies can be called upon to set, and ca set encampments around you. Um, understanding the different, uh, the different names of God and being able to know which one to call during the time of your affliction, whatever it is you're going through, um, that's key in this walk. So cast on your cast on Him your every care, and wait during this time, the sweet hour of prayer. That being said, um, I prayed last night um, for everybody that was on this line um, today. I'm going to, um, I'm going to open the, oh, well, oh yeah, there's one, there's one part that I did not read yet, Apostle, but we can, um, if you'd like, um, we, I can open, I can read that part and then we can open up the line for comments if there are any comments or questions. Right. Okay, good. This is the last bit that I did not read. Lord, I would go to the ends of the earth to hear your voice, but I do not want to wander aimlessly. Take me to where you want me to go and speak to me there. If you need to change my view to show me your glory, I'm all for it. And with that, I'm going to turn over to Apostle. God bless you all.